ETFs are quickly becoming the most popular investment choice for passive income investors. So what are ETFs? How do they compare with mutual funds? And what are the different types of ETFs? What's up guys, my name is Adrian and welcome to my channel on passive income investing. By the end of this video, I promise you that you will be an expert when it comes to ETFs. So let's start with the basics. ETF stands for exchange traded fund. So the easiest way to understand uh, what the term is, is to define it back so an ETF is a fund which can hold multiple investments in it like stocks or bonds that's traded every day on an exchange which is the stock markets whether it's on a Canadian exchange like the TSX or a US exchange like the New York Stock Exchange also since it's a fund it needs a fund manager so every ETF has a manager whether it's a bank or another financial institution like a wealth or asset management company so the closest thing to an ETF is a mutual fund so let's quickly uh, compare the two so a mutual fund is also a fund that holds a multiple investments and is managed by a fund manager but the main difference is that mutual funds are managed privately not publicly so the mutual fund is not traded on the stock market this could be uh, considered a disadvantage because it's harder to access a uh, liquid in case you need some quick cash you need to call the company or your financial advisor to say hey I want to sell some units of my mutual fund because I need money this is usually a, a long process because it could take several days or longer and you might have to pay penalties which are sometimes called exit fees so if you have shares of an ETF however you can just sell some or all of the shares that day as if you were selling a regular stock on the stock market so it's much easier to access your money with an ETF the other main difference is the management fees. They are typically much higher which, with mutual funds than ETFs. So I say typically because it all depends on the mutual fund and the ETF in question. But from personal uh, experience, I can tell you that mutual funds typically have annual fees of about 2% and ETFs are typically 0.5% or way lower. It really depends how um, actively managed the ETF or mutual fund is. Less management or work the fund manager does, the smaller the fee. So since mutual funds are typically managed very heavily, they have higher fees. So these are the two main reasons why investors have been shifting to ETFs instead of mutual funds. They are simply more cost efficient while accomplishing the exact same thing. So an important uh, term to understand when it comes to ETFs or any other type of fund, if for that matter, is NAV or net asset value. So the NAV of an ETF it basically tells you how much one unit or one share of the ETF is worth. So it's calculated by taking the total value of all the investments inside the, the fund and dividing that amount by the number of outstanding units the ETF has. So the stock price of an ETF will be very, very close to the NAV or identical. Sometimes there is a small difference. The NAV can be a bit higher or, or lower than the actual market price because the NAV is only calculated once a day after the market closes. So now that we've gone through the basics of an ETF and how its value is measured, we need to discuss the different types of ETFs. And this is where many newer investors get confused and have a lot of questions. So don't worry, it's normal. I had the same questions myself uh, years ago. So let's talk about one of the most popular types of ETFs out there. They are very popular with millennials and members of the FIRE community, financial independence retire early. Yes, I'm talking about index ETFs that are also called passive index ETFs. So to understand how these types of ETFs work and why they're so popular, we need to understand what an index is first. So an index is simply a measuring tool investors use to gauge the overall performance of a particular segment of the market. So an index, when it comes to the stock market, can measure a lot of different segments. So to better understand, let's, let's look at the two biggest and most popular indexes in the US stock market and the biggest one for the Canadian stock market. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index, or simply the Dow, is the most popular one for the U.S. I'm sure you've seen it in the news when they talk about the U.S. stock market there and they say that the uh, market is up 400 points or the U.S. market is down 600 points. They're actually talking about the Dow Jones Industrial Average Index. So this index tracks the 30 biggest companies in the U.S. by market capitalization, which is simply the company's value. So market 
ca capitalization or, or simply market cap is calculated by taking the share price of a stock and multiplying it by the number of outstanding shares. Another popular index is the S&P 500 index. So this measures the largest 500 companies by market cap in the US. So this is also a solid indicator on how the overall US stock market is doing. So what about Canada? Well, the biggest one in Canada is called the S&P TSX Composite Index. So this index has about 250 companies in it and measures about 70% of the overall value of the whole Canadian stock market. So this basically means that approximately 250 companies on the TSX make up about 70% of the entire uh, Canadian stock market by value. All right, so what does an index ETF actually do? Well, index ETFs try to replicate a particular index. So it basically uses that corresponding index as a benchmark. So if you have an index ETF that replicates the TSX composite index, it's like buying into the whole Canadian stock market. And of course, owning an index ETF means you're entitled to the dividends from any of the companies in the ETF that actually pay out a dividend. So let's qu quickly take a look at uh, two index ETFs which tracks the Canadian market and the US market as a whole so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so let's quickly take a look at two examples of index uh, ETFs. The first one is ZCN. So this one follows the um, TSX composite index, so the overall Canadian market. If we look at the uh, management fee, you'll see that it's pretty much a joke at 0.05%. The uh, annual uh, dividend yield is 3.69%. Um, so this index ETF just follows the, uh, the TSX composite index or the Canadian uh, stock market as a whole. And if we look at the holdings, uh, you'll recognize uh, that most of the holdings are gonna be really the big, uh, big cap companies in Canada. So Royal Bank of Canada, TD, Shopify, Enbridge, um, et cetera. A second example now, one that follows the S&P 500 index, which is the, uh, the, a popular index uh, for the US stock market, ZSP is the stock symbol also from BMO. So if you look here at the management fee, you'll see that it's also a joke at 0 0.08. The uh, annual dividend yield is 1.58 on this one. And if we look at the holdings, you'll recognize all the companies as well. It's pretty much the big uh, U.S. company. So the, the bigger the company, the more uh, percentage or the more weight it's going to have in the ETF. So, of course, I, uh, Microsoft and Apple are the two biggest ones, followed by Amazon, Facebook, uh, Alphabet, which is Google, et cetera, et cetera. So this is why they're considered safe, guys. You only have really the big companies and a very small percentage uh, uh, of the main companies that make up the, uh, the stock market as a whole. So why is this a popular strategy? What are the advantages of index ETFs? Well, the answer is simple. It's because you get broad exposure to the companies included in the index with very low risk. So if you invest in an index ETF that uses the TSX composite index, for example, it's like investing in the whole Canadian stock market. It's essentially the opposite approach of picking individual stocks. If you invest in a small oil stock, for example, and that particular company goes bad or the industry goes bad, you will have major losses. But if you own an index ETF that tracks the Canadian stock market as a whole, it would make very little difference to you because that particular company only accounts for a very tiny portion of the overall fund. So that's why buying these types of uh, broad index ETFs is like buying the entire stock market, which means a share price tends to be uh, more stable and follows uh, the, what the stock market is doing, essentially. I know I'm repeating myself, but I want to make sure that it's crystal clear. So these ETFs are perfect for investors that don't want to choose individual stocks because they simply don't have the time or the knowledge to do so. And also they don't want a lot of volatility. So they're willing to give up the possibility for higher investment gains and higher dividends for safety and stability. This is why they are so popular with members of the FIRE movement as they are considered one of the safest investments you can make while earning passive income on the side. It's also based on the belief that over the long term, the stock market goes only one place up. So yes, it will, it will fluctuate uh, along the way, but if you look at the Canadian or the, the US the stock market charts for the last 100 years, it's pretty clear that this theory is actually true.
In addition, these ETFs don't require uh, much work to manage since they just follow the index, which means the management fees are very, very low. Like we just saw in the example, sometimes they only have like 0.05 or 0.10% annual management fee. That's like 10 to 15 times less than a typical mutual fund, which is significant. That's why they're commonly referred to as passive ETFs or passive funds. Personally, I don't invest in these broad-based index ETFs. The reason is because the stocks in the index include dividend-paying and non-dividend-paying companies. So as a pure income investor where maximizing uh, my monthly income is my top priority, I prefer ETFs that contain dividend stocks only. I'm not saying owning broad-based index ETFs is bad. I'm only providing my opinion and my strategy. So keep in mind that there are a million uh, indexes out there. So not all uh, index ETFs are created equal. For example, besides the three popular indexes uh, that we covered, there are other smaller, more specific uh, indexes like the North American Marijuana Index, which tracks a basket of companies with significant business activities in the cannabis industry. So the HMMJ ETF follows this index. I made a video covering that specific ETF in detail, by the way, because it's the best way, in my opinion, to invest in the cannabis industry. Another example is the Hang Seng High Dividend Yield Index. So this index measures the performance of Hong Kong listed stocks characterized by high dividend yield. The HCN ETF managed by Horizons uses that specific index. So I think by now you get my point. All right, so enough about passive index ETFs. What about ETFs that are managed a bit more by ETF managers? Well, these are commonly referred to as active ETFs opposed to passive ETFs, and there's a lot of them out there. Uh, these can be ETFs that concentrate on a certain sector like technology or financials, uh, etc. These types of ETFs are typically called sector ETFs or industry ETFs because they focus on one sector. Then there's also region-based ETFs. You probably guessed it these funds are focused on our particular region like Canada, US or Europe. And then there's ETFs that use combinations, for example, financial stocks only in Canada. So it's not only region specific, it's sector specific. The possibilities are pretty much uh, endless. So ETFs are extremely versatile for this reason because they tailor to different investment needs. They're perfect for passive income investors that want broad or specific sector exposure without having the need to research and analyze and choose individual stocks. So that's all done by the ETF manager. So let's check out three ETFs so you can see what I'm talking about here. We'll look at one that is sector specific. We'll look at one that is region specific. And the third one is both sector and region specific. Okay, so let's start with a sector specific ETF first. So um, uh, this one is called the Harvest Healthcare Leaders Income ETF, stock symbol is HHL. And from the name, you probably guessed it, this focuses on the healthcare sector. So if we uh, just scroll down for the information here, it has a uh, management fee of a point 85% per year. The dividend yield is 9.11 and it has about 20 uh, healthcare companies, just the big ones. So if you look at the breakdown here, you'll have it. There's some pharmaceuticals, healthcare, biotech, uh, healthcare providers. So everything to do with healthcare. And in terms of region, it is a, a diversified, but focuses more on the US simply because there's a lot of healthcare companies. A lot of the big ones are based in the US. So what about a region specific ETF now? So the ZWC ETF uh, or the BMO Canadian High Dividend Covered Call one is a perfect example. So this ETF focuses on dividend companies only in Canada. So it's region specific. If we uh, go to the breakdown, you'll see it here that you'll have a bunch of different sectors, but it's all in Canada. So this is a good example of a region specific ETF. Now, what about one that uses both that's both uh, sorry sector specific and region specific well, the zwk etf is a perfect example it's the bmo covered call us banks etf so just like the name says 
uh, it focuses on banks only in the US. So this one has a dividend yield right now of 10.02, which is great. Management fee at 0.65. And if we look at the breakdown, it's 100% financials, 100% US. So you have both sector specific and region specific. So you might have noticed that all three of the ETFs I just reviewed have the term covered call in them. So what does that mean exactly? Well, covered call refers to a strategy involving options. Options trading is a whole different, a whole other ball game, and I won't get into the details of that in this video. Um, but ETFs that use the covered call strategy are some of my personal favorite ETFs because they offer higher dividend yields than other passive uh, ETFs, for example. So these ETFs are so good that I made a separate video to discuss the strategy and how it works in detail. So make sure you check it out. I'll add the link to the video description below. So now the million dollar question, guys, which ETFs should you invest in? As Canadians, how do we find the best ETF? listed on the TSX, the Toronto Stock Exchange. And is it possible to build a fully diversified stock portfolio only using ETFs? Well, the ETF market is growing rapidly, which means there's a lot of ETFs out there. It's like shopping for a car. You're pretty much spoiled for choice. Luckily for you, though, you know me and are subscribed to this channel. I spent years hunting down, analyzing and comparing different types of ETFs on the TSX that are specifically tailored for passive income dividend investors like myself. And I came up with a beautiful list of about 25 ETFs that are designed for income investors. So these ETFs are managed by reputable uh, ETF managers and you can get full diversification not only in terms of sector but also in region without having to choose individual stocks. It's really a piece of cake. In part two of my ETF series, I will, I will review those ETFs in detail. I created a nice spreadsheet, like I just said, which you will be able to download. And in the spreadsheet, it classifies every ETF in terms of sector and region. So you'll see how easy it is uh, to invest using ETFs exclusively. So if anything is still unclear about ETFs, guys, don't hesitate to ask me a question in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. So if you learned something from this video, please make sure to hit the like button and also make sure you're subscribed and click on that little bell next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on my future content. So thanks so much for watching guys. I really appreciate it. Take care and see you next time.